Once again, welcome everybody to our Gospel meeting. We are going to read from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 14, please. An invitation that had been rejected. It says, the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 14, reading from verse number 16. Then said he, the Lord Jesus, unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade, or invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all sins are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. There are several examples here of people that were excusing themselves. In other words, people that rejected the invitation for this great supper. Verse 21 says, the servant came and showed his Lord these sins. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the old and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That will be enough for the moment, and we know that the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word. I was thinking of this passage because, as many of you are aware, just two or three days ago, there was the 10th wedding anniversary of a very important couple. I'm sure that most of you already know who I'm talking about. And I'm talking, of course, about His Royal Highness Prince William, or the Duke of Cambridge, and his wife, Kate Middleton. And that was a very important day, the 29th of April, 2011. Can you believe that? I was reading a little bit about how many people were invited to that wedding, and it said that it was around 1,900 people received an invite to go there. You know, the Westminster Abbey was packed, of course, and people that went to the reception, and that was a huge event. But I don't want to speak about the royal wedding. I just want to tell you something that happened around the royal wedding to relate it to the invitation that was rejected. Here we don't have a royal wedding, he just said a great supper, a banquet that was prepared by a man that obviously was very rich. And many people rejected the invitation to go over there. That royal wedding 10 years ago, people that received the invitation, I don't know how many rejected it. But I want to tell you about one young girl from Mexico that back then she was 19 years old. No connection to the royalty whatsoever. Just a 19 years old girl. Her mother, she was a fan of Princess Diana. Like that mother died when this girl was being born. So this woman died short after this girl was born. She had picture of Princess Diana everywhere in her house. I always was, a, you know, something big for that woman. And when that girl grew up, she said, one day I'm going to go to the next royal wedding. And she wanted to do that. She didn't have money. She didn't have any means to do so. And she went outside of the British Embassy in Mexico City. And with a little tent there, she was in a hunger strike for 18 days, asking for one invitation to go to the royal wedding of William and Kate. So I think that you got the context now. An invitation that had been rejected, and here we have a young girl, desperate, sending letters to the embassy and to everybody saying, please send me an invite to the royal wedding. As you can imagine, she didn't receive any invitation. She couldn't go. She lost eight kilos. She was there for almost three weeks. I will tell you the end of the story in a minute, but let's go back to the gospel. That is the point that we want to make here. So a royal wedding, a lot of people that have been invited, people that wanted to be there, on the other side of the world, a young girl that was not invited and she wanted to go. Here we got 
a man that prepared a banquet, a great supper, and he invited many people to come. And this man said, come, all things are ready. You don't need to do anything. I have made all the preparations for you. The only thing that you need to do is to accept the invitation and come. That's all what you need to do. And here we are reading that they all started to make excuses. And they got different reasons, and that is not my point here today, to go through the different things that they said to avoid going over there. The point is that they rejected the invitation to go to that great supper. My dear friends who are listening to this, that might be something incredible or even silly for some people to reject an invitation for a huge event, a great event, like the royal wedding, for example. You think about that girl that was desperate of being there and she was not invited. But we want to tell you that being saved, salvation, the gospel message is far more important, is greater than an invitation to any royal wedding in the world that you can imagine. The Lord Jesus Christ is inviting you to be saved, to be in heaven with him for all eternity. And he says, come, for all sins are ready. Look at the person who is inviting you. Imagine that you receive the invitation for the royal wedding directly from Buckingham Palace. And you say, how, can, how am I going to reject this invitation? I don't know if the invitation was made and the Prince Charles maybe and, and uh, or the Queen directly, I don't know, but how can you reject someone like that? My friend, but when we preach the gospel, we are telling you that God himself from heaven has made all the preparations, not only for a reception that maybe lasts for two, three, four, ten hours, whatever. He's giving you something that is going to last for all eternity. But if you died in your sins, you will be lost for all eternity. And we have to be very clear with this. It's not just God is inviting you for heaven, I want to go. No, you are a sinner because we all are sinners. Our sins make us to be separated from the glory of God. We are not worthy to be invited to heaven. We don't deserve that invitation. The only thing that we deserve is to be away from the glory of God for all eternity. But his love is so great. He loves so much the world. He loves you so much that nevertheless, although you and I are sinners, he wants us in heaven. Isn't that great? If you remember the royal wedding, you see the list of the people that were invited. You go all the head of the states of the commonwealth. You go members of the royal families around Europe. You got pop stars and even famous sports person. They invited people that were worthy of being invited. God is inviting people that don't deserve anything. He's inviting sinners that our sins make a separation between him and us. We are not worthy. That invitation is based only on the tremendous love of the God of heaven for poor sinners like you and I. That's the person who is inviting us. And that's the reason why he is inviting us, because he loves us. But the man in his invitation said, come now, all things are ready. You know, everything is ready for salvation for you. God is not demanding you to follow a set of rules to see if you will reach his standard to be in heaven. You know why? Otherwise, we all will be lost forever. No one person on earth will ever be able to be in heaven one day. And he knows that. Even the children who are here, the adult or anyone who is listening to this, you know very well that in the end, we all are sinners and we cannot be in God's presence by ourselves. God is saying, look, I love you so much. I desperately want to save you. 
I know that you are unable. I know that you are not ready to do anything because you just can't. But I love you. I'm going to prepare everything for you. I'm going to send my son, the Lord Jesus, to the earth to become a man, a human being, to have blood in his veins that one day he could shed on the cross, to have flesh that one day will suffer the wounds by the Roman soldiers and be nailed on that place. I'm going to give you my son because I love you. I want you to be saved so much. I'm going to give him. And not only that I'm going to send him to die on the cross, but at the third day, I will bring him back from the dead. And that is what he did. The Lord Jesus came into the world. He died on the cross. He gave his blood on Calvary. He was buried. And then he came out of the grave. The day of his resurrection. He ascended up into heaven. A glorified body. He is there. And now the invitation given to you. Come. All sins are ready. Tell me something. What else can you do that can be better than the work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross? You can't. My friends, salvation is not about the family where you were born, the baptism that you received at any point of life. It's not about your behavior. It's not about your effort to please God. It's not about the money that you can give to charity or religious organizations. Salvation is only because of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In no one else there is salvation. His person, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only secure basis to be saved. Why? Because he, the Son of God, that became a man and died on the cross and gave his blood for your sins and came out of that grave one day, he is risen and he is able to to say, come for all sins are ready. He wanted so much to have others with him that he said to his servant, go again, compel them to come. Tell them that everything is ready, just come. And then we know that people started to come and then the servant said, it has been done as you said, and we still have room. That lady, young lady from Mexico that I mentioned at the beginning, you might be wondering what happened to her. Of course, she didn't receive any invitation to go to the wedding. Finally, one of the billionaires in Mexico had a little bit of compassion. And this billionaire paid for the airfares for this young lady to go to London. Of course, not to attend the wedding, but at least to be in the streets of London. But when she arrived to the airport in London, she wasn't allowed to get into the country. Not because she didn't have a visa, she had a visa. But because she had to prove that she had enough money to support herself during the two weeks that she was intended to be there, and she had to provide a physical address of the place where she was going to stay. And she couldn't do any of that. She wasn't prepared. She didn't know where she was going to stay. Maybe she was thinking to get a tent in, what was the name? Hyde Park or something like that, and to be around there and to wait and to, to see the, the, the people coming. I don't know, but she wasn't ready. She wasn't prepared. She arrived to that place and she was sent back to Mexico. And she just followed the wedding on the TV like everybody else in Mexico. You see, this young lady, she wanted so much to be there. <laughs> She really wanted to attend that place. And she went into hunger strike and someone got pity and paid the ticket, but that was not enough. Not even to come closer to the place where these people were having the wedding. And we are telling you that the God of heaven has made all the preparation for you to be with him for all eternity. Sending his son who died on the cross. He gave his blood. He came out of the grave. And now the only thing that you need to do is to say, I'm a sinner. My friend, you don't understand that you are a sinner and worthy of salvation. You can't be saved. People say, well, if God wants to take me to heaven, fine, take me. I want to go. You need to understand first that you are a sinner. 
Children who are not saved, they need to understand that they are sinners. Good men and good women that are not saved, they need to understand they are sinners. They are sinners like everybody else, because we are sinners too. Some of us, by the grace of God, we are sinners saved by his grace. Maybe you are trusting on an intercessor, a saint, a woman, an angel, whatever, to help you a bit. They can't. Like this billionaire, he couldn't do anything at the end. We want to tell you, you, you don't need anyone else. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. And him alone is able and willing and ready to save you now. If you confess your sins unto him and you ask for his salvation. The invitation that has been rejected. Are you going to reject it? that invitation today, we trust that you might come to the Lord and be saved for all eternity. Shall we pray?